hello everyone okay let's just dive into this guys if you miss any of the other four seasons of marriage um check out the playlist and they are all up and available for the replay um, i'm just gonna dive into this tonight give you guys 30 minutes i've been saying for the last couple of days i was going to record and i did promise you guys today so i'm going to give you 30 minutes please don't mind the ac in the back and um if you guys hear my son um come in and out of the room um just he just gonna come in out of the room <laughs> i'm sorry i don't mean you know any you know but so guys let's jump into this and i pray that the lord bless our time together with this reading guys also guys let me know in the comment section because i've been getting a lot of great feedback for you that have been following along with us doing the four scenes of marriage how has this impacted your marriage or your future marriage or your relationship or just what are your thoughts on this like i'm getting emails from you all and comments and different things and how it's a blessing to you we thank god for dr gary chapman writing this book we thank the lord and i'm just grateful that i'm able to not only read it you know for myself but to read it along with you guys i i really like that and like i said between um like when we're done with this book we're going to jump into um fault brain guys i'm in mom mode i'm been kind of busy but um we're going to jump into um the purpose driven life by rick warren and i know in september we're going to lord's where we're going to be reading the five love languages and you know i'm also going to be releasing other videos as god lead but guys let's just dive into this and we just ask that god um just bless our time together amen so this is where we left off at um the contrasting personality is the babbling book whatever they see or hear they talk about if no one is home to listen, they will call someone on the telephone and say, Do you know what I just saw? Do you know what I just heard? They have no reservoir. And guys, like I said, if you're just jumping in and you haven't been following along with us, this probably will not make sense. So I would encourage you to go back on the other videos or at least the last one so it can kind of make a little bit more sense. So usually these two personalities marry each other. Babbling brooks are attracted to dead seas because they are such wonderful listeners. Dead seas are comfortable with babbling brooks because they are not pressured to talk. The good news is that a dead sea can learn to talk and a babbling brook can learn to slow the flow. Effective communication is a choice. Empathetic listening will encourage a dead sea spouse to talk because it creates an atmosphere of genuine interest in what he or she is saying. If negative feelings have developed because of past treatment in childhood or in the marriage, empathetic listening tends to bring healing. In fact, the quickest way to deal constructively with negative feelings is to make the person feel heard and understood. Another question I'm commonly asked is, how can I listen empathetically when my spouse's words are critical and harsh? Again, the answer lies in understanding what is behind the harsh, critical words. Typically, a spouse who speaks critically speaks out of a heart filled with hurt and anger from past mistreatment. We're all human, and we tend to get defensive when our self-esteem is threatened. But because empathetic listening incorporates both feelings and perceptions, it is the most effective means of helping people to process their hurt and anger, which is why it is one of the primary skills of an effective counselor. I'm not suggesting that you become a counselor to your spouse, but I'm suggesting that if you learn the art of empathetic listening, you can be part of the solution rather than part of the problem. Because guys, I'm just remembering that we're on strategy four develop the awesome power of empathetic listening empathetic listening is also an effective vehicle for building your mate's self-esteem when your spouse has a healthy self-esteem he or she will be less defensive even if your spouse has some dysfunctional patterns of communication empathetic listening can potentially create a climate where those patterns can be discovered and changed Judgmental listening, on the other hand, simply perpetuates the problem. That's why many couples come to the point of saying, we simply can't communicate, so why try? Fall turns to winter, and winter often ends in divorce. I repeat my conviction that many of these divorces could have been averted if at least one of the spouses had learned the awesome power of empathetic listening. So guys, um, that concluded. Let me tell you what it concluded, guys. 
that concluded like from pages 105 to 111 so now we're, as when I say concluded I mean as far as like the beginning stages of strategy four so now we're still in strategy four but we're on learning to listen empathetically empathetic listeners approach every conversation with the attitude of trying to understand the other person I want to know what is going on in my spouse's mind and heart I want to enter into his or her joys and sorrows such levels of understanding are essential if you want to have an intimate marriage one of the characteristics of empathetic listening is developing a genuine attitude of understanding this is no small matter nor will it be easy for most of us psychologist Paul Tournier and I'm sorry if I mispronounced that last name expressed it well when he said each one speaks primarily in order to set forth his own ideas exceedingly few changes of viewpoints manifest a real desire to understand the other person by nature we are all egocentric the world revolves around me the way I think and feel is the most important issue it is a giant step in maturity when we choose to develop an attitude of empathy honestly seeking to understand the thoughts and feelings of another person the Apostle Peter challenges men in particular when he writes to husbands be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with respect that's first Peter 3 7 according to Proverbs 18 2 egocentric living is foolish a fool finds no pleasure in understanding but delights in airing his own opinions thus when we ask God to help us change our attitudes excuse me guys to give us a genuine desire to understand our spouse we are showing signs of wisdom Another important aspect of empathetic listening is choosing to withhold judgment on our spouse's ideas. Here again, we may need to radically shift our way of thinking. After all, we have opinions on just about everything and we're convinced that our perspective is accurate. Otherwise, we change our views, right? But when we say, the way I see the situation is the way it is, we fail to recognize that our spouse thinks the same thing about his or her own opinions. Because we are both egocentric, we often have different opinions about the same situation. That is simply part of being human and being married. Spouses often see things very differently. If I listen to my wife with a view to setting her straight, I will never understand her. And most of our conversations will end in arguments with no resolution, leaving us as enemies rather than friends, opponents rather than teammates. If this I'm sorry, it is this propensity to pass judgment that daily sabotages the conversations of thousands of couples. When the wife says, I think I'm going to have to quit my job, and the husband responds, you can't quit your job. We can't make it without your salary. And remember, you're the one who wanted this house. They are either on the road to an intense argument or else they will withdraw in suffering silence each blaming the other for the coldness of winter that settles on their marriage but how very different the conversation would be if the husband withheld judgment and instead responded to his wife by saying it sounds like you had a hard day at work honey do you want to talk about it he has now opened up the possibility of understanding his wife and when she feels understood together they can make a wise decision regarding her job it is the withholding of judgment that allows the conversation to proceed a third characteristic of empathetic listening is the most important but also the most difficult affirm your spouse even when you disagree disagree with his or her ideas how do you do this by affirming your spouse for sharing his or her ideas and feelings with you in other words you express your appreciation to your spouse for being open and honest with you affirmation is a big step beyond merely withholding judgment when you affirm your spouse verbally, you give him or her the freedom to have ideas that differ from your own and to have feelings that you would not have that you would not have in a similar situation. Your affirmation might be verbalized in statements similar to these. I appreciate that you are sharing your ideas and feelings with me. Now I can understand why you could feel so hurt. If I were in your shoes, I'm sure I would feel the same way. I want you to know that I love you very much and it hurts me to see you hurting but at least now I understand what's going on inside you and I appreciate your being open with me obviously all of this affects me and I have some thoughts and feelings about it I'm not sure I can verbalize them 
but I will be willing to try whenever you want to hear them. But please know that I'm with you. I love you and I want to do whatever I can to help. A partner who hears these affirming words may or may not be ready immediately to receive the spouse's perspective, but he or she will feel understood and affirmed. Nothing is more important than affirmation to create an atmosphere in which one spouse will eventually be willing to hear the other's perspective. Developing the art of affirmation, whether you agree or disagree with your spouse's ideas, creates a positive climate that encourages your mate to share openly, and it cultivates the soil in which the seeds of teamwork can be planted. Eventually, those seeds will blossom into the flowers of spring and summer. The capstone of empathetic listening is that you share your own ideas only when your spouse feels understood. As with the other steps, this one may require a monumental change in our typical communication patterns. By nature, we are quick to give our ideas. In fact, one research project indicates that the average person listens for 17 seconds before interrupting to give his or her own ideas on the subject. That is egocentric listening at its worst and seldom results in productive conversation. Empathetic listening, on the other hand, creates a positive climate in which your spouse will almost certainly want to hear what you have to say. When your mate feels understood rather than condemned, he or she will be far more open to hearing your point of view. Empathetic listening stimulates positive feelings. The most common mistake in most marital conversations is the premature expression of ideas. And before we continue this page, let's jump back into this page. So um, you guys that have been following along for a while with me on this, he always gives a box and some of like the strategies and chapters. And this box is talking about the four keys of empathetic listening. And I always try to leave it on for a few seconds for you that want to take notes or like screenshot it. But the first key of empathetic listening is listen with an attitude of understanding not judgment the next key is withhold judgment on your spouse's ideas the next key is affirm your spouse even when you disagree with his or her ideas and then the fourth is share your own ideas only when your spouse feels understood so I'm gonna leave it for a few seconds and then we'll get into the other page So such behavior, let me go back to this, it's the premature expression of ideas. Okay, such behavior almost always ends in unproductive arguments that leave the couple more estranged and the marriage that much closer to winter. Marissa came to my marriage seminar alone. She described her marriage in the following way. Our marriage is no fun. We are definitely in the winter season. I don't want to go home at night and deal with my husband. I want things to change. I know that we both must change. I tend to shut him out. I don't talk to him. When we try talking, we argue about everything. I don't listen to him and he doesn't listen to me. I talked to him on the phone last night after our session and he is open to reading a book with me. I hope that our marriage can get better. I had the sense that if Marissa could learn the skills of empathetic listening, she could turn her marriage towards spring. What are the practical skills that can help Marissa and you develop the art of empathetic listening? And I'm just going to just pause that for a few seconds for you that want to think about it or share below in the comments or just think silently to yourself. Now, guys, we're going to get into learning the skills of empathetic listening. The ideas I'm going to share are not mysterious. They are not wrapped in psychological terms but even though they are easy to understand mastering them will take conscious effort and practice i believe that anyone who sincerely tries can learn the awesome power of empathetic listening i suggest that you read the following list of ideas again and again until they become a part of your thinking when your spouse starts talking to you ask god to help you remember and apply the skills that will be most meaningful to your spouse Daily pray the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi. Sorry if I mispronounced that because I've never um, heard of this prayer before. So who pray, O Divine Master, grant that I may not 
so much seek to be understood as to understand. That is a prayer that God will answer. Put the following steps into practice and you will have to practice and watch your communication blossom. And I'm going to just leave that on here for a few seconds in case y'all want to screenshot that prayer or write it. Well, that is a blessed prayer, guys. It's simple, but it's so profound to me. Okay, let's go to the next page. Okay, so guys, he has given us some numbers. I didn't know that this would do this because like I said, I'm reading it actually along with you guys. So I'm actually like reading this with you guys. So I'm learning as y'all are learning. And I hope no one take that um, like offense. I mean, like I'm reading and learning with you guys. So um, number one, guys, he says, listen with your eyes. When I say guys, that's kind of in general, women, men. I just say, guys, it's something I've been saying since I was little. So, number one, listen with your eyes. Give your spouse your undivided attention. Turn off the TV. Put down the book or magazine and look at your spouse. Eye contact communicates. What you are saying is important to me. So, that's number one, guys. Number two, listen with your mouth. Keep it closed for at least five minutes. Interjecting your ideas too soon indicates that you are not in an empathetic listening mood. mode. As long as your spouse is talking, your role is to listen. Remember, your goal is to find out what is going on in your spouse's mind and heart. Number three, listen with your neck. Nodding your head indicates I'm trying to understand what you are saying. I'm with you. Number four, wow, guys, I'm, I'm really learning a lot. What just... All of this, but really with this. Okay, number four, listen with your hands. Did I read number three, listen with your neck? Nodding your head indicates I'm trying to understand what you are saying. I'm with you. Okay, number four, listen with your hands. Don't fidget with the pencil, paper, or the TV remote control. Let your hands relax at your sides or on your legs. Don't put them behind your neck or scratch to the ceiling as if you are bored. Wow. This is some great, awesome notes. Number five, listen with your back. Lean forward occasionally while your spouse is talking rather than sitting rigidly. A slight forward movement of the body communicates you have my full attention. Number six, listen with your feet. Stay put. Don't walk out of the room while your spouse is talking, unless, of course, an emergency erupts in the next room. If that happens, tell your spouse why you are leaving. For example, honey, let me put out this fire in the kitchen and I'll be right back. Number seven, listen for feelings as well as for facts. If you only listen and respond to what your spouse says and ignore feelings, he or she will not feel understood. Number eight, as you listen, try to see the situation from your spouse's perspective. Try to understand your spouse's interpretation of the situation and his or her feelings about what about what has happened this is difficult to do because we humans are naturally egocentric but it is essential if you are to become an empathetic listener number nine resist the urge to share your perspective before your spouse feels understood don't tell your spouse that he or she doesn't have the facts great i'm gonna read that don't tell your spouse that he or she doesn't have the facts great is misunderstanding your intentions or has no right to feel angry or disappointed. Never share your perspective until you understand your spouse's perspective. Once your mate feels understood, he or she will be far more likely and far better able to listen to your opinion. Number 10. Seek to clarify your understanding of your spouse's ideas by asking reflective questions. What I hear you saying is that you think blank. Am I understanding you correctly? When your spouse responds to your question, not affirmatively, don't jump into battle mode, even if you disagree with what your spouse is saying. One second, guys. Okay, guys, sorry about that. They're just going to mom mode again. Okay, so that's number 10. So don't jump into battle mode, even if you disagree with what your spouse is saying. Number 11, seek to clarify your understanding of your spouse's emotions by asking reflective questions. It seems to me that you are feeling disappointed because blank. Is that correct? 
Your spouse may agree or may say disappointed. How about her anger and frustrated? Again, an affirming nod from you will communicate, I'm hearing you. Baby, did you do the hand sanitizer? Justice? Justice? Okay. Sorry, guys. Like I said, I'm in my mom mode too. <laughs> okay. So that's number 11. So number 12, guys, summarize your understanding of your mate's thoughts and feelings. What I'm understanding you to say is that you are hurt and angry because you feel that I let you down by not blank. Is that correct? When your spouse indicates that you understand what he or she is thinking and feeling, you are now ready for the most important step in empathetic listening. Affirmation. Number 13. Affirm your spouse's thoughts and feelings verbally. You might also say something like this. As I listen to you, I can see how you would feel hurt and angry at me. If I were in your shoes, I'm sure I would feel the same way. And you would if you were truly seeing the situation from your spouse's perspective. Verbal affirmation of your spouse's thoughts and feelings is what makes you an understanding mate rather than an enemy. Excuse me, guys. Number 14. Request permission to share your perspective. Now that you have fully heard your spouse and understand his or her thoughts and feelings. And guys, I'm going to do a recap of the 1 through 14 as well. But understand his or her thoughts and feelings. You are ready to ask permission to share your own perspective. You might say something like this. I really appreciate your sharing with me. Now I understand why you would be upset or whatever emotion you sent he or she is feeling. Can I share with you my perspective? Because I think it will let you know what was going on inside me through all this. If your spouse is open, and people typically are open after they feel understood, you are now free to share your perspective of what you did and why you did it. By listening empathetically to your spouse, you create an atmosphere in which your spouse is more likely to listen empathetically to you. When two people are seeking to understand each other, usually they will. Then, then they can seek a solution to their problem. When they seek to resolve rather than win, in argument, they not only discover workable solutions, but also find intimacy with their spouse. Few things are more important in moving, in moving a marriage from fall or winter back to spring or summer than the awesome power of empathetic listening. And before we get into strategy five, um, we're going to read a few minutes on that, which is discover the joy of helping your spouse succeed. I just kind of want to just do a recap, guys, of the one through 14. Number one, guys, and I will leave it for like a minute or so so you guys can see. I guess it's the way that I have the book. I'm not really sure. Okay, number one is listen with your eyes. I'm not going to read it all over again. Just um, give you guys the gist of it. You okay, baby? Yes. Okay. What did you hear? I, I hear? I hear the sink. You heard the sink? Okay, it's okay. It's because mommy's washing those clothes in the um in the back, okay? No, baby, you can't do that. I'm, I'm recording. My son is saying hi, guys. Okay, so you got to be quiet if you're coming here, okay? I've got a few more minutes. I promised him 30 minutes. I have to give it to him, okay? 30 minutes? Yes. So number one, guys, is listen with your eyes. Listen with your eyes. Number two, listen with your mouth. Number three is listen with your neck. Number four is listen with your hands. Number five is listen with your back. Number six is listen with your feet. Number seven is listen for feelings as well as for facts. Number eight, no justice. Not right now, baby, no. Mommy, I already let you play with that earlier. Mommy's going to continue recording, okay? You can't make that noise with the toys. We're going to go to bed soon, okay? Sorry, guys. Number eight is as you listen, try to see the situation from your spouse's perspective. So, guys, I'm going to leave it like this for a couple seconds. So, just in case if y'all want to do a screenshot or take notes, this is one through eight. And then I'll continue on with nine through the rest. Number nine, guys, is resist the urge to share your perspective before your spouse feels understood. Number 10 is seek to clarify your understanding of your spouse's ideas by asking reflective questions. 
Number 11 is seek to clarify your understanding of your spouse's emotions by asking reflective questions. Okay, so I'm going to read that again. 10. Seek to clarify your understanding of your spouse's ideas by asking reflective questions. So 1 is ideas, and 10 is ideas, and 11 is emotions. And then 11 is seek to clarify your understanding of your spouse's emotions by asking reflective questions. 12. 12 is summarize your understanding of your mate's thoughts and feelings. 13 is affirm your spouse's thoughts and feelings verbally. And then 14 is request permission to share your perspective. Let me leave it on here for a few seconds, guys. And then I'll leave it on 14 for a few seconds. Then we'll read um, strategy 5, some of strategy 5. Okay, and let me put it on 14. No, baby, I'm putting it on here so they can so they can take the notes. Okay, guys, so that's strategy four, the end of strategy four. Now we're going to read for the next maybe three or four minutes on strategy five. Discover the joy of helping your spouse to see. Okay. So, what is success? You can come up here, baby. Okay, what is success? Ask a dozen people and you may get a dozen different answers. A friend of mine said, success is making the most of who you are with what you've got. I like that definition. Every person has the potential to make a positive impact on the world. Just as if you're going to stand here, you got to be quiet, okay? Sorry, guys. So it all depends on what we do with what we have. Success is measured not by the amount of money we possess or the position we attain, but by how we use our resources and our opportunities. And guys, you know, I try to record especially these type of videos um, when he's in school or, you know, when I can have some time to just is more quiet because he's getting a little sleepy now. So he's ready to lay on me. So I do apologize about that, guys. But. I did promise you guys that I would do it. So I just wanted to keep my word. I think I recorded once or twice. I think with these. On this playlist for the four seasons with him. But um. Yeah let's continue to read guys. So I have to hold it like this. So. Okay every person has the potential to make a positive impact on the world. It all depends on what we do with what we have. Success is measured not by the amount of money we possess. Or the position we attain. But by, but by how we use our resources and our opportunities. Position and money can be used to help others or they can be squandered or abused. The truly successful people are those who help others succeed. The same is true in marriage. A successful wife is one who expends her time and energy helping her husband reach his potential for God. Reach his potential for God and for doing good in the world. Likewise, a successful husband is one who helps his wife succeed. An old adage says, you can't help a man uphill without getting closer to the top yourself. I agree with my friend Har Harold Sala, who said, with the possible exception of the parents who give a son guidance in the early years of his life, no single person contributes to the success of a man more than his wife. I'm going to, that was a, some really good quotes, guys. I'm going to leave it on there really quick so y'all can take some notes on that or screenshot that. I'm even going to screenshot that. Well, I can't do it now, but I'll take a picture in the end. Okay, more than his wife. It could also be said that a husband makes the greatest contribution to his wife, to his wife's success or failure. I must confess that I knew very little about helping my wife succeed in the early days of our marriage. I suppose that in a general sense, I wanted her to be happy and successful. But the main focus of my attention was on what she could do for me. When she did not live up to my expectations, I sought to motivate her by manipulation. My theme was, I would treat you better if you would treat me better. 
It took me several years to discover the joy of helping Carolyn succeed. But when I did, our marriage went from winter to spring in a few short weeks. And guys, I'm going to close with that. Prayerfully, you all were blessed with our video um, on tonight. God bless. And I'll see you guys um, in the next um, video.